All right, guys, I want to talk about another one of my favorite directors, Takashi Miike. Or Miike, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's M I I K E, Mike. <laughs> Miike. Anyway, he's a Japanese director, and I haven't seen all those movies. I don't own all those movies, but I want to talk about a few that I do own, which I think are some of his best. And, um,. I mean, there's ones that people say are great that I haven't seen. Uh, the Bird People in China, I think, might be one of his early ones, maybe one of his first ones, but it has uh, some high ratings. I'll have to see that sometime. But anyway, I do want to talk about a movie that I don't own, first of all, and uh, that is Visitor Q, because that movie is kind of notorious. A lot of his movies are have the shock factor. So when you get into looking up really strange movies and you get all these weird movie lists, you know, you've also got your bloody, disgusting movies that... Your cult classics, you know, you have your weird and your strange, your surreal, like David Lynch and David Cronenberg, but you also just have your kind of shock value movies where they they call them like video nasties, where um, there's a lot of blood and gore and stuff like that, but are a lot of, you know, a lot of deranged themes. Visitor Q has, you know, rape, incest, murder, and all, all everything else. Okay, but let me talk about what the movie is, because it's done in like a comical kind of fashion. You know, they, like, none of that stuff's funny, but it's, uh, it's made to be offensive, and I watched it a long time ago. I don't own it, and I'm not in a hurry to own it or anything like that, but it's basically supposed to be like a reality show where like somebody comes and visits a family for a certain period of time and the, the guy who visits them is the visitor Q. I think I think that's the idea. So this guy goes and visits this family but this family is like the most twisted, dysfunctional, messed up family that you can imagine and that's kind of the theme of it. And I'm going to talk about spoilers in this movie but in the end of the movie in a weird messed up way the family kind of comes together and so it's kind of like a deranged happy ending. But yeah, it has like the, the father sleeping with his daughter, and there's not a lot of like pornographic scenes or anything, but there is some nudity, some boobs, you see that, but um, it's just so messed up. Like the son beats the mom, uh, like throws her through walls and stuff. There's, um, and yeah, the dad wants to sleep with this one girl and she doesn't want to, so he tries to rape her, but she runs away, he, he ends up killing her. And then he ends up having sex with her dead body, which is, it's all really messed up stuff, I know. And the kids, or the, the son is bullied by these neighboring boys all the time. And I can't even think of some of the other messed up stuff. The mom, one of the main scenes that I remember is she was like squirting milk out of her nipples. And basically, like the visitor Q guy had an umbrella and it was just like spraying all over the room. And the room was just like filled with it. So, yeah, that movie is completely twisted, <laughs> but, uh, like I said, it's done in such a comical way, it's, uh, you know, it's whatever. Okay, now a lot of his other movies I've seen have messed up themes and parts, but that one definitely takes the cake for trying to be the most offensive. Uh, but I want to talk about these, and I have Gozu, I have Itchy the Killer, an Audition, and uh, Happiness of the Katakuris, I've already talked about that, but, um, wow, so I have some trailers, or I have the trailer of Itchy the Killer playing on one screen there, and then I have the Gozu DVD in there, so you see the, the uh, menu, um, and it's interesting on Gozu, the DVD, it says from the director of Audition and Itchy the Killer, which are probably some of its most popular movies. Um, I really love Gozu. It's been a long time since I've seen any of these, so I'm going to kind of speak from memory, maybe talk about, maybe read the back of it or something. You know, let's just talk about Gozu. Um, let's, let's read the back of it. It says, Yakuza underling uh, Minami has a problem. He's been ordered by the boss to dispose of his brother and crime family mentor Ozaki. He's having a hard time completing the mission. Things grow even more difficult when the target disappears from the backseat of his convertible. In a nearby isolated town, Minami soon learns 
that help will be next to impossible to find. The local inn is run by a degenerate brother and sister team, while the local crew provides him with a subordinate named Nose, whose motives are unclear at best. When he finally discovers what happened to Ozaki, Minami is faced with a new dilemma. Among all the nightmare elements, his loyalty is put to the test along with his sanity. And I think that um, Nose guy is the one that has like the pigment um, issue with his face, like half his face is white. So this film is very strange, and it's about a very strange town, kind of, that he runs into. I think Gozu means like cow-headed demon or something, because there's like a cow-headed demon in this. Uh, so this movie is a surreal one that he did. I don't remember a whole lot about this, but the town's very strange where, you know, the people who live there seem like everything's normal when it's not. And I love the video game Silent Hill, and this kind of gives you like, some Silent Hill vibes. <laughs> um, but I will say, I'll spoil one of the main scenes at the end. Ba basically, the ending scene is one of the most popular scenes probably of this movie. Is when a woman gives birth to a full-grown man. Which I think might be the guy that he was looking for. I don't remember. But I mean, I don't, I don't think it's like graphic. That, you know, like, you don't see her, but like her legs are spread or whatever. And basically like a, a full adult male's like head comes out. And then like his whole body comes out. It's like, how is that even possible? Okay, it's not. But um, it's very weird. So yeah, this is very surreal. This goes along with the David Lynch, uh, David Cronenberg stuff, so I love that one. And he does a lot of stuff to do with the Yakuza and gang members and stuff, the Japanese gangs. Uh, Dead or Alive trilogy is pretty good. I don't have that, but that has a lot to do with the Yakuza. Itchy the Killer, I think, is based on a manga, like a Japanese comic. This film is ultra-violent, and... Um, it's in like a comic style. See, I haven't opened this one yet, but uh, I need to watch it again. Let's read what this one says. Akashi Miike's Itchy the Killer has endured as one of the most influential pieces of genre filmmaking of the last two decades, and now it returns in a stunning all-new digitally restored special edition approved by Miike himself. The visceral, bloody, and often hilarious film follows... Uh, what? Kakihara, a notoriously sadistic Yakuza enforcer whose search for his boss's killer brings him into the orbit of a demented costumed assassin known as Ichi. So, there's basically the Yakuza enforcer is this guy, and like he, his face, he's like cut his face, kind of like the Joker, the Heath Ledger Joker, but um, he's cut his mouth like wide open and he has like these piercings like sealing his mouth shut um, but he loves to torture people he's really sadistic and stuff and um, this itchy kid that killed his boss or whatever basically like a killing machine and he just I think he wears like I want to say that he wears like ice skates he, he has like blades on his shoes basically and he kills people like that and stuff <laughs> like it's crazy, uh, but he just walks in a room and just like slaughters people, and um, he has like no emotions basically, he just like murders, and uh, this guy enjoys pain, and he enjoys inflicting pain, and basically the scene comes down to a battle between these two, and uh, it's pretty awesome, so, but there's like bodies getting sliced in half, people with like hooks in them stretching their skin so a lot of gruesome scenes like that but like I said it's done in like a comic book style it's like an action movie with gore um, and I know that Quentin Tarantino is a fan of him and they've kind of made a film together called Sukiyaki Western Django I watched a long time ago and it's kind of like a Japanese samurai western with modern guns like machine guns and stuff so and it's about like the red versus the white like there's two different like gangs or whatever so that's an interesting movie too audition i think is one of the greatest horror movies um and this is very different this isn't this is very graphic again it has a lot of 
disturbing stuff in it. But it's pretty slow at the beginning. It has a lot of drama and it builds up. And what this is is about like an older guy who either his, his wife died or he's left alone. Um, let's see, yeah, okay, he's a widower. I'll just read the back of this one. Recent widower, um, whatever his name is, is advised by his son to find a new wife. So he seeks the advice of a colleague. Having been out of the dating scene for many years, they take advantage of their position in the film company by staging an audition to find the perfect woman. Interviewing a series of women, he becomes enchanted by Asami, a quiet 24-year-old woman who is immediately responsive to his charms. But soon things take a very dark and twisted turn as we find out that Asami isn't what she seems to be. Pulling the audience into a story that will lead to one of the most harrowing climaxes in cinema history, Miike twists and turns us through delirious editing and shocking visuals for one of the most depraved nightmares of all time. Audition. And you know, this guy's a Japanese director. I don't really know any other Japanese directors by name, I don't think. I'm sure there are a lot of good foreign films that I love, Japanese and Korean and everything else, but you know, I don't know if this is the guy that really introduced me to Japanese filmmaking. There's a lot of people that don't like watching foreign movies because they don't want to read subtitles, but you're missing out on a lot if you don't like that. You really are. So yeah, this movie is about a guy who's trying to get a new wife. So he holds auditions for a movie, but really the questions that he's asking and stuff is really to find his mate. Uh, but we find out over time that there's some disturbing stuff about this girl. Okay, spoiler alert, she ends up being psychotic. Okay, she was like tortured and stuff as a girl, and um, now she's like a killer herself, and she's very twisted. So um, I don't want to spoil all the, the scenes and the ending and stuff, but um, there's some great scenes in this that that stand out as like the greatest of all time in horror. You know, and Takashi Miike has a lot of style in his movies. Uh, like they're like rock music videos, like the color, the the music, and every the sounds and everything, are really good. Um, I don't know this uh, I love how you know a lot of different horror movies make you afraid of different things like Jaws made people afraid to get in the water and Child's Play as a kid made me afraid of dolls and stuff sometimes you know um, and Hostel made people afraid to travel to go to other countries this kind of makes you afraid to date because you never know like what the other person might be like um, she turns out to be all sweet and stuff in the beginning and uh, you start finding more about her so yeah it's very disturbing scenes in this movie but this isn't just all out violence this isn't just all out shock factor this has a lot of good drama and build up to it and this is definitely a grade A movie I love that movie I talked about the happiness of the Katakuris it's like a musical that has to deal with zombies and murder so um, are these people it's not even not really I don't know murder but these guests that show up to their bed and breakfast end up dying so they bury them they don't know what to do they don't report it they just try to cover up the bodies and uh, they end up digging themselves into a hole but this, it's hilarious it's great the musical scores are great and uh, all that so he has a ton of other movies that I need to see. There's some other ones that I have seen that I don't have, like Izzo, and a lot of people uh, don't like that movie. Uh, it's kind of like a weird zombie samurai movie. This undead samurai Izzo goes around just slicing people with a sword and blood just sprays out everywhere. And um, it's kind of long and I don't think there's a lot of dialogue or a lot that happens it's just it's really beautiful to me like that's a movie that I want to get to but um, I think a lot of people don't like that movie but I do because it's a lot of style um, I don't know Takashi Miike if you want to get into foreign films and you like over-the-top stuff stuff that's gonna keep you on the edge then yeah, definitely check out his movies. 
So, I mean, if you love horror movies, if you think that you're really a horror aficionado, then you need to watch Audition, because it's definitely up there with The Exorcist and everything else, I would say. All right, guys, that's going to be it. See you later. Peace. God bless.